hello everyone. So, we will continue with constant tension winding test. So, as I have mentioned that it provides conditions somewhat similar to actual uh, processing conditions during winding, warping, sizing. Basically, the most of the breakages occur in the yarn during this processes, winding, warping and sizing. After that, obviously, in weaving also during uh, weaving, during picking. So, in most of the cases, we will see the system is that it is winding or unwinding type situation, except warp which is which gives the stamp almost static loading. Okay. So, and after that after warp they will see when once fabric is made then the yarn strain does not actually it is not that important it is single yarn strain then comes to the fabric. Okay. And in that case if we see that majority of the process the running of the, the yarn undergoes the winding, warping and sizing. And this gives the direct indication of the efficiency of a particular yarn in the uh, its impact of that yarn on the efficiency of a particular machine. Yarn with a very high strength if it breaks during the winding then it will not it will actually affect the efficiency. So, that is why it is important to know the running condition okay. the strength in running condition. So, A B as I have mentioned are fixed pulleys, P is movable pulley under static condition the load is divided into two equal parts and when tension is imposed it has it got extended stretched by E. So, the speed we know that it is basically input speed multiplied by 1 plus E times okay. and we have to arrange some means so that the uh, it can take care of the stretchability and if we know the stretch percent then we can easily adjust the speeds and standard breakage rate is 8 breaks per 1000 yard of yard. Now, if we know this standard breakage rate then we can adjust we can adjust this load and that load will be the dynamic load of the yarn. Dynamic load of the yarn means at load say P the yarn gives 8 breaks per 1000 yard that means, it is a P is the dynamic load. If it gives more than that then we have to reduce the load okay, till we get this that means, higher the value higher value of P means better is the yarn. And suppose we are having a load say lower load much lower than P. In that case if it does not break running smoothly that means, we are not getting any indication. Similarly, that in a stat a static condition if it the if it the, the yarn does not break if the material does not break then we will not get the strength. Similarly, dynamic strength only we will get if it breaks repeatedly and that is the 8 breaks per 1000 yard the load. The tension required T to get the standard breakage rate of 8 breaks per 1000 yard is measured. Okay. So, if it is higher than 8 breaks per 1000 yard then we have to reduce the load to bring it to such a value which gives exactly 8 breaks per 1000 yard. Now, there is a relationship. Now, the relationship is that for a yarn N 1 is the breaks per 1000 yard at tension T 1. 
So, this is the in x axis it is a tension running tension. Okay. So, tension we are uh, giving T 1 and N 1 we have got the value and y axis is plotted the log value of N 1, it is a log N 1. So, there is a straight line relationship between the tension and the logarithmic value of number of breaks per 1000 yard. So, for T 1 tension there is a breakage rate of N 1 which is have value. So, log N has been put here. Similarly, for tension T 2 the breakage rate N 2 breaks per 1000 yard. So, this is the plot T 2 tension and log N 2. Now, the if we plot a straight line curve this this is actually straight line from there we can get any value any unknown value. So, in that case we can actually predict what will be the number of break at what is that is the indication that will get almost indicate which is actually which works. Here the system is that the thing we cannot get in this instrument we cannot get 8 breaks 8 getting 8 breaks per 1000 yard is impossible it, will, it takes large number of testing it takes it will take large longer time because we do not know suppose we, we do one unknown tension we have given suppose it is coming say 50 breaks per another unknown tension we are giving say 30. So, how long will we, will we go? Will we cannot go infinite. So, to get exactly 8 value that is why we the system is that we test the yarn in two different strength uh, by tension value T 1 and T 2 which is which will give us some values of n. So, T 1 test at tension we know n 1 we have reached. So, that means log n 1 we have put T 2 we have we have increased tension to T 2 we have got higher n 2 value then log value we have put and simply we have put the straight line. Now, what we have to reach here we have to reach the value standard value which is nothing but 8 breaks per 1000 yard. Now, to reach this 8 breaks per 1000 yard that means, log of 8 value we will take y in y axis we will find where is log of 8. This 8 value x equal to 8 if it is standard then we can simply tell this is the t value. T value is the which we actually want to know that is the t value which we from which we can compare this is the standard rate breakage rate t and the slope of the curve is that it is a log n 2 minus log n 1 by log n 2 minus log this is the y this height divided by this distance divided by t 2 minus t 2 that is the slope tan theta. So, slope of this curve we can get which is constant and so this is here and standard well any standard. So, for a B S standard it tells it is a 8 breaks per 1000 yard for any other standard any known value. Suppose, for our purpose we want to know at what tension the breakage will be 1000 or 100 breaks. So, we can simply calculate we can get the value extrapolate the value. Okay. So, this is the standard value that means, if our standard is x 8. So, we can calculate the tension required T for to get the value 8 using the simple formula straight line. Okay. This is what is that? It is nothing but y equal to m x plus c. So, we know this a, this a value that constant here from there we can calculate. Okay. So, we can calculate 
the required tension if we know if we want to have any other any known value or in you know, vice versa also if we know the tension we can predict how many breakage will be there that is also important here in this test if we can plot for a particular yarn if we can plot this curve using T 1 T 2 and N 1 N 2 if we can plot then this will help us in setting the tension setting the tension in winding warping or sizing. So, we can come to know that what will be the probable breakage at that. So, if we set the tension T, so then we know there will be x breakage per 1000 yard. So, from there we can predict. So, this will give us a clear idea of the performance of yarn during running. Now, there is a empirical equation. This empirical equation gives relationship between the dynamic tension ok dynamic tension with the static strength ok this is a beautiful equation which give which will solve many problem I will discuss one uh, practical problem. So, and this uh, sigma is the standard deviation of single yarn strength. So, here this is the probably the only equation empirical equation which gives the relationship between the dynamic strength versus static strength, where k is the constant which depends on the n number of breaks and changes with the length of the single with the test length. So, this k value it changes with the number of breaks and test length of the single yarn strength. So, this k value depends on both in static mode that is static mode what is that it is a test length gauge length and in dynamic mode it is depends on the number of breaks. So, k value it changes, but for as per bit uh, so, this value static mode. So, this gives one uh, relationship between static and dynamic that means, if we know if we know the breaking breaking strength for a particular gauge length which will give us idea about k value and if we know the variability variability of the yarn strength then we can come to know the tension required to for a certain number of breaks. That means, here if we see this standard deviation that means, for a keeping every other x for a say for a particular yarn a yarn with a certain mean strength this is a mean breaking strength. If we increase the standard deviation suppose variability of strength is increased then what will happen this will give us the idea about that this value will reduce this time t will reduce if we change the if the variability that is standard deviation increases that the t value will reduce that means the n number of breaks per 1000 yard will occur at lower tension that means, yarn strength is yarn performance is poor ok lower at lower tension it will um, break ok. Similarly, if the yarn strength is high yarn strength is high keeping the standard deviation constant that means, your our tension required for certain number of breaks will be more. So, in B A standard handbook the first estimate of tension required to produce 8 breaks per 1000 yard. So, that is 8 breaks per 1000 yard is the standard breakage rate and they use this formula. What is the formula? T equal to average yarn strength 
multiplied by 1 minus C B percent of single yen strength by 30. This is given in British standard handbook, B S standard book. And if we specifically follow this, now what are we reaching? This it is x bar that means, single yen strength T is the tension required for standard break of 8 breaks per 1000 yard okay. and C what is 1 minus what is C B? C B is nothing but standard deviation by x bar multiplied by 100 divided by 30 and if we see it becomes x bar minus 3.3 standard deviation. What does it show? That k value, k value becomes 3.3 here. K is 3.3 here for a particular situation. As we have mentioned, that gauge length. What is the gauge length? In BS standard handbook, they say the test length should be 20 inch. And n value we have mentioned earlier. So, n is 8 breaks per 1000 yard. So, only for test length 20 inch and 8 breaks per 1000 yard, if we consider then the known value is for k is 3.3. And if we do not know, if we change all these values 8 and 20, then k value will be different. So, if we want to use k as 3.3, then you have to set this this value. We have to set the gauge length for this static test, and we have to set the t value uh, that breakage rate in t in such a fashion that breakage rate becomes eight eight breaks per thousand yard. Only in that case, the the k value will be three point three. Now try to see one numerical here. This numerical it is a basically it uh, takes care of many concepts and we have to see very carefully to solve this problem and uh, this will give us clear idea about the application of the practical application of this tensile tester this tester and here if we see that what is it telling here? The tenacity of a yarn 29.5 n e cotton yarn at 4 inch gauge length is 15 gram per tex. So, here condition 1 at 4 inch gauge length. Tenacity here, it is a fifteen fifteen gram per tex, fifteen gram per per tex, okay. At four inch gauge length, and the what is the yarn? Any twenty nine point five any yarn. So you we can convert it to n tex n t the text we can convert this one and if we multiply this what we will get we will get the strength we will get the mean strength x bar. Okay. So, at the question is that at what tension okay, it is a given the what the whatever the question is that we have put in pink color okay. at what tension in constant tension winding test the breakage rate will be 20 breaks per 1000 yard. So, the requirement is that at tension we want to get and for 20 breaks per 1000 yard okay. and assume the standard deviation of the single yarn strength is always 20 gram standard deviation is uh, given it is constant and another condition is that do we have tested the same yarn 
which gives that 200 gram tension gram 4 tension the breakage rate is 0.5 breaks per 100 yard. So, at 200 gram force tension the breakage rate is 0.5 breaks per 100 yard. So, this is that means there are three conditions one condition is that the yarn is tested in at 4 inch gauge length it gives the breaking stress at 15 gram per tex okay. and what we want at what tension the breakage rate will be 20 breaks per 1000 yard. Okay. Now, try to solve in step wise try let us see and this is the equation as we know. Okay. This is the required tension and standard the value of breaking uh, that number of breaks. Now, T 1 equal to 20 200 gram that is T 1 here we are trying to this is T 1. Okay. Last condition this T 1 we are trying to get. So, 200 gram and it is 0.5 breaks per 100 yard means five breaks per thousand yard. So, this will become n 1. So, this parameter is known. So, for everything for any calculation as we know we have to know the two data two data point. So, T 1 is straight away given. Now, T 2 how you, how will you go get? So, we want to measure T and x value. So, this this is we want what tension T value this is we want and x value is given 20 breaks per 1000 yard x is here 20 that is known, but we do not know the T 2 value we do not know the N 2 value that is now how do we get to get because we have to have two po data points. So, one data point is straight away given now we have to find another data point. Now, for that data point there is some clue here given tenacity is given at 4 inch gauge length it is a 15 gram per tex that means 15 gram per tex is a it's static mode of tension static mode. So, the equation which we have we know this equation in earlier slide we have show the in the static mode. this k value t this 3.3 is only valid with the 20 inch gauge length. This k value only we can use for 20 inch gauge length and this 8 breaks per 1000. So, in that case if we consider N 2 as 8 and if we can calculate the T value this will become T 2 and clue is that here we have to we, we do not know other k value we, we know this k value that means we have to get x value x bar that that standard deviation is given constant, but we have to get x bar with the as per B A standard. What is B A standard? B A standard says that it is a 20 inch gauge length, but in our case the x bar is at with the 4 inch gauge length. So, here it is a 4 inch gauge length data is given. Now, we have to get the data this strength with the this uh, strength with it is 4 inch gauge length we have to get this data with 20 inch gauge length that means, how do we do in last class we have discussed 
that with the change in gauge length how to measure how to get the tens strength how the strength value changes okay that we will use here now n1 is known this is the value here this k value we have assumed we have we have taken this we have to use this this equation okay we cannot use. so here n2 is fixed n2 is as per the standard n2 is fixed 8 now we have to get the t value this t2 value so gauge length is known so this x bar is the mean breaking load at 20 inch gauge length if we can get this x bar value then the t value will be t 2 value and standard deviation here it is given 20 for all the equation condition always standard deviation is 20. So, we will use this here t value the standard deviation t sorry this 20. Now, this minus 3.3 into 20 that means minus 66 okay 6 minus 66 is it's a fixed we are we know we this is but what about x bar now we have to get the x bar to get x bar we know the value 15 gram per tex is given so from there we will try to get the value breaking load so 20 29.5 any means 20 takes yarn and at 4 inch gauge length the breaking load now breaking tenacity was there 15 now we are converting it to breaking load to in 300 gram force is it x bar it is not x bar till now because here gauge length is 4 inch. We have to convert this gauge length to 20 inch, then only the whatever breaking load will be the x bar. Now, breaking load at 20 inch gauge length, so we will use earlier equation that is S R L with R is nothing but 5, 20 by 4, 20 inch by 4 inch R equal to 5. So, we will use this this formula here. In this formula, we know the all this value except this R L. Okay. S L is known. So, S R L we have to calculate that means at 20 inch gauge length at 4 inch gauge length the breaking load was 200 300. So, S L by S R L equal to 1 minus 4.2 this we will bring it to left hand side. Okay. So, we will just interchange 1 minus 4.2 1 minus 5 r equal to 5 to the power minus 1 5 and this value what is the v by 100 c percent by 100 means the this standard deviation by mean value mean value means 300 it is a mean breaking strength 300. So, V is nothing but V by 100 is nothing but 20 standard deviation by mean strength. Okay. So, that means it is coming out to be. So, you can see C V percent C V percent is nothing but standard deviation by mean into 100 here v equal to sigma by x bar into 100 or sigma by x bar is 300 into 100. So, basically it is a 20 by 300 into 100. So, v by 100 we can write as a 20 by 300. Okay. So, that is re, it is replaced here. So, 20 by 300. So, if we calculate this value we will come out to say S, the ratio of S R L and S L becomes 
comes out to be 0.923. So, S L what is S L? S L is nothing but the mean strength at 4 inch gauge length which is 300. So, S L means it is coming out to be S R L it is 300 multiplied by 0.923 it is 277. What is 277? This is the strength breaking strength at 20 inch gauge length. Now, we have reached that value that is this is nothing but the x bar in this equation. So, now we can get the t value 277 minus 3.3 multiplied by 20 it is coming out to be 211 gram force which is nothing but T 2 value. Okay. Now, what we have got T 1 we have got N 1 we have got T 2 we have got N 2 we have got and we know the value N 2 is 8 breaks per 1000 yard. So, T 1 is 200 gram force n 1 is 5 breaks per 1000 yard it is given and just now we have calculated T 2 equal to 211 gram force n 2 is 8 breaks per 1000 yard that is a standard we know and x we know the x value this x value is known it is a 20, 20 and then we have to calculate a x is 20 breaks that is the question at uh, what is the tension to get 20 breaks per uh, 1000 yards so, x is 20 and we have to calculate this t value and it is using the simple formula the same formula we can use. So, 200 t 1 plus 200 t 2 211 minus 200 multiplied by log 20 x minus log n 1 is 5 divided by log n 2 is 8 minus log 5. So, this if we just simply solve we will get the value which is equal to 233 gram force. So, that is the actual result. So, what does it show? So, for if we know the basics of this um, test methods we can calculate any data anything provided we have some uh, some uh, raw data and condition here is that here what we are trying to see we we know the statics load okay if we have two dynamic load value then it's a, a little bit simpler but if we have say static load then if we don't know the k value there we have to use the bs standard so known standard then we will go for 3.3 value and with the condition then we have to use the exact condition and gradually we have to proceed. Okay. So, that is uh, this is a typical problem one can solve and in the in industry the applicability is that we can set the tension because uh, otherwise if we set the wrong tension then it will affect the uh, unnecessarily affect the efficiency of uh, machine. Okay. So, we can set that is the result. Now, the application here the results serve as a guide to the behavior of the yarn in subsequent process. So, it will give us the guide. So, if we know the breakage rate for a particular tension that will give us the probable end breakage in the subsequent process end breakage in warping end breakage in winding or sizing and accordingly we can set the tension it gives an idea and comparison of yarn quality. So, we have two yarns basic problem is that uh, the weaving industry uh, the or uh, some processing industry they purchase yarn from the buyer okay, supplier. Normally, we do not test this test and we test we get uh, the sample by knowing the tensile test okay, in static mode tensile test. The problem is that uh, yarn with higher tensile test value 
if it gives the higher breakage rate, then the it affects the actual uh, the efficiency of the subsequent process. That is how. So, if we see here, 3 yarns are there, yarn A, yarn B, yarn C. Now, which yarn is oh, actually I have to purchase? If we get if uh, someone tells I will uh, definitely we will go for this yarn, it is a higher CSP, okay, higher single yarn strength. If we say which one is stronger yarn, higher CSP and higher single yarn strength, it is good yarn without testing the dynamic mode. Now, once we test the yarn in dynamic mode then our decision will be entirely different. In dynamic mode, if we see the result, although yarn B has least CSP means count strength product least CSP, it gives least the breakage rate. That means, the yarn B is expected to give higher higher efficiency a lower stoppage during running okay at least 3 times so yarn a although it's giving higher csp or higher strength its breakage rate is 3 times higher than this almost so that means it will give poor performance okay this yarn b and yarn c also it gives poor performance so, as far as the performance is concerned, the one should prefer the yarn B. Okay. And the strength if we see it is not that low, it is although it is lower than the yarn A or yarn B, but it is not that low, it is workable. But if we take the yarn A with higher CSP and strength, its performance will be poor. Next is that single yarn strength testing UTM universal testing machine is used which works in the that strain gauge principle and normally standard gauge length is 50 centimeter gauge 500 millimeter okay. and speed is adjusted. So, that the time to break is 20 plus minus 3 second that is the you have to adjust the uh, speed. So, in that during that time it breaks. Now, after single yarn strength another strength measurement is there, another type of strength it is a skein method it is a least strength testing. The advantage of least strength testing is that at a, at a time we can test longer length a large larger length uh, size of length. Okay. Typically, it is a 120 yards of length of yarn we make early and we test. So, it tests a longer length of yarn in one test, okay. but in uh, normally in other uh, single yarn test what we do? We test smaller uh, test and number of sample we have to test. Second advantage is that the yarn is expected to break at its weakest spots. So, the lee is prepared and this yarn in single yarn strength it breaks once okay, at its weakest spot, but once that lee it is in lee form it is continuous uh, lee form. So, it will start breaking at different point. Okay. Now, the thing is that suppose it is a single yarn strength. So, it breaks at this point, but if it is Lee large number of rep. Now, this is what we are doing these are the jaws this is top jaw and this is the bottom jaw. Okay. Now, here this yarn has got different weak spots different 
different weak spots are there. In single Lyapunov strength, there is only weak one weak spot. We don't have any idea about the other weak spots which are little bit stronger than this point. We do we are not getting any idea. It breaks and that's at the end of the test. But here the advantage is that depending on the position and the location of the weak spot and the strength of the weak spot, this will start the yarn will start breaking. First this weak spots break, then this will break, this will break. So, depending on the strength this will break. So, this will give overall idea of the weak spots different weak spots present. Okay. If the number of weak spots are more then the least strength will be less least otherwise it will not stop at the particular weak spot. Suppose in that yarn only one weak spots are there only one weak spot that means even up after breakage of that weak spot, the test will continue. Yarn will also have certain strength, it the strength will increase, okay. the strength value will increase. So, that means one weak spot will not basically give us the total, um, uh, it will not stop the test. So, yarn is expected to break its weak spots so that it gives more realistic strength value. It will not stop there. Okay. That obviously, the same hank we can use to measure the yarn count. Now, the hank which we had say 120 yard we have used here. So, this is say 120 yards of Lee, this is 120 yards and here we have got certain strength okay. in terms of say kg we can get in terms of pound also we can get. Okay. Now, here the value the term comes C S P. C S P is nothing but count strength product. Okay. Now, why is it product? Why not it is a division count strength division why not it is a some something else. Basically the thing is that here the breaking load here it is expressed in terms of pound one should be very careful. So, this C S P is nothing but product of breaking load in pound L V multiplied by the yarn count in any no other unit that gives us idea about C S P. Now, so why the concept of C S P comes from the the least strength the yarn strength in skein form. Okay. It is not the single yarn strength not in the other any other form not in the form of say bundle or nothing. It is only you have to have a yarn Lee of 120 yard. Okay. That means, breaking load of yarn Lee in pound multiplied by the yarn count in any that gives the idea of the that value of C S P. Now, the thing is that you can see the value here C S P is, is nothing but the strength in pound and any count is any. So, S multiplied by n say any. Now, this value a yarn say we have prepared a yarn from a particular cotton from a particular variety of cotton. Okay. 
particular variety of quadrant and you have got a count of say 30 any and we have got a strength of certain strength say strength of say 60 pound. So, what will be the value CSP 60 into 30 1800. Typically CSP does not have any any unit we do not use any unit it is a CSP count strength product and it is known it is a pound and any. Now, this 1800 value what does it indicate? Why is it product? Now, from the same variety of cotton, same cotton and same set of machines, I am producing say 25 count. Yarn. So, if I produce 25 count yarn, in that case what will happen? 25 count is, is it coarser or finer? It is a coarser count, coarser than 30s count. Okay. So, it is a n is 25. Now, what is the expected load value, breaking load value? The expected breaking load will be typically say around 70 to 72, definitely it is we have to have this expected. So, that it is the value product it is coming out to be exact very close to 1800. That means, if we make the yarn finer the strength if we make the yarn finer by increasing the value then the strength value will proportionately reduce. Okay. If we make the yarn coarser by reducing the any value, the strength value has to. So, from 62 it has to come to 72 or 70, so that we get this value. Now, what will happen if we assume, suppose if we are producing say 24 5 count and we are getting a value of say 60 or 65. So, 65 pound we are getting for 25 same cotton we are using and we are instead of 30s count we are now producing 25 any, but we are getting 65 pound. So, I would like to know whether this 65 pound is perfect or not, because earlier it was 60 pound, now it has increased we have made it coarser 30 to 25 and from 60 it has become 65. Okay. Now, should I be happy with that? Just to have this indication we will multiply this two and we will definitely get value less than 1800. Okay. It will give value much less than 1800 that means, it is something is wrong with this yarn. Now, what does it indicate? It indicates that the process the manufacturing process of this yarn 25 count yarn there is something wrong, because we have used the same cotton same cotton with similar production line should result same CSP value. So, for certain variety of cotton the CSP value should be almost same that is the indication. The importance of CSP one must understand very carefully. It gives an indication of the performance of your machine. 
okay, that is one aspect. That means, if we change the count little bit, if we change suppose 30 count a cotton, a variety of cotton say V 1, V 1 variety cotton. Okay. It is meant for 30 count and we know if this cotton will give if the your machine performs perfectly optimum a perfection the, it gives the CSP of 800. That means, the variety of cotton its indication its indication is 800 1800. 1800 shows the nature or quality of the cotton. If you and this will give us indication this particular variety of cotton will give will be used for this count 30 count around 30 count. Now, if we pro reduce the count make it 25 count it should give the value 1800. Now, suppose now, for this cotton, cotton variety V 1, is it true that if we produce any count, this must this will always give 1800 CSP? No. Suppose with this variety, this means 30 count it is a medium variety cotton. Now, if we try to produce yarn of 60s any very fine count you want to produce. Will it give us a strength of 30 pound least strength, least strength of 30 pound? So, that we can get 1800 CSP? No, it will not give this variety of cotton if we it is which is meant for 30 count. If we try to produce 60 count it will give a much lower value say 10 or 15 or 20, 20 pound strength it is producing and 16 it is 1200 CSP. That means, it is we are actually trying to overuse this say we are not trying to use the actual potential of this machine. This cotton is meant for 30 count range around 30 count. If and this cotton is actually will give us 1800 CSP. Okay. Now, we are using another superior variety of cotton, very high quality cotton superior variety B 2 say which gives a CSP of say 2400 CSP and which is meant for say 80 count around 80 count. This 80 count yarn it is there then we will give this uh, this variety of this variety of cotton is meant for 80 uh, count if we produce then we will see it is it will require say 30 pound approximately 30 pound least strength will give and we can get 200 now suppose we are trying to produce yarn of very coarse count of from this variety from this variety we are trying to produce say 10 count, 10 count. In that 10 count, can we expect that we will get a strength of 240? 240 strength will not be there, 240 strength will, it will be lower than that. That means, there is something wrong in it. Our selection of cotton is wrong. CSP, although it is a very simple term, but it talks about too many things. So, it 
gives the indication of the variety of cotton. Like uh, uh, when you are uh, going to purchase a cotton, it will, they will tell okay, this will give us a CSP of say 1800 CSP. That means, you know the your quality. And this yarn is a re, within range of say 30, around 30 count. This, yarn, this cotton is for 30 count cotton. And if that particular cotton, if everything is right with the cotton, everything is right with the cotton, if you still are not getting 1800 CSP, that means your machine there is some major problem with your machine. Okay? That means that the, it also gives the optimum count possible. Okay? The, it will give us idea about the machine performance it will give us the idea about the, the range of count we can produce, it will give us the idea of the either whether we do we over spinning it or under spinning it all this idea it will give. So, that is why this value it is approximately constant for a particular variety of cotton, it is not the unique price. If you change the variety it can range from say may be 1000 or 800 CSP to say 3000 CSP. And if it is asked that uh, yarn we are getting 800 CSP, another yarn we are getting say CSP of say 2000, which is having with a, with a better cotton. That means, definitely 2000 CSP is with a better cotton, okay. but for with a better cotton if we try to produce coarser count as we have seen, it is not giving the higher CSP. So, CSP the CSP value indicates the overall performance of the spinning machine. Okay. So, main disadvantage of this technique is the result depends on the friction between yarn and also between the yarn and hook. So, if the yarn to yarn friction is changed keeping the yarn same, if the yarn to yarn friction changes then the yarn the CSP will change. It is a very common example a normal cotton yarn if we take and the same cotton yarn if we scour the least strength that is the CSP value with the least strength value will change. Okay. That is the so the CSP is normally it is taken in the raw form raw cotton form and no measure of strength variability. So, strength variability we know we do not know we would get the overall strength value okay. and we will stop here in uh, next class we will start the, the fabric uh, tensile test okay, with the strip tensile test. Okay. Till then thank you.